uh, payments. So this Bernstein note basically goes through s some of the market share among checkout buttons um, or checkout solutions uh, on e-commerce sites. And PayPal still holds the largest share with 16%. Of, of checkout buttons, credit cards is accounts for more than half. I think it's like 63%. So that's counted as its own thing. But um, Apple Pay is actually quickly gaining. So Apple Pay is now at 5%. And when you look at the year over year growth in terms of usage, PayPal for the month of November was down 8%. Credit cards were down 2%. Apple Pay was up 53%. Um, there's also a category called like finance, which I don't know if that's like BNPL, or like a installment loans. It wasn't defined, and I was just looking at the screenshots, but that was down nine percent as well. Basically, the only segment that was really up was Apple Pay, up fifty three percent. So they are just eating market share within the payment space. Um, with Apple Pay, for context, the card networks still get paid, so it's still like you're going through a credit card. Um, but Apple gets 0.15% of each transaction. So it's not as good for the networks as them going directly through the, the credit card checkout process, um, but they are still uh, facilitating that transaction. And so I guess I'm trying to think of the best question here, but it makes me feel like the payment space moves a lot and kind of changes quickly except for one element which is the card networks is there any is there anyone worth betting on in the payment space that aren't the card networks yeah well uh, apple i guess would be one but it's not relevant enough to that size of that business so i don't think so paypal i do not like at all i do not why not i think it's a lot of acquisitions, a lot of mismanagement at Venmo where they've been able to ride this tailwind and grow their GMV because of fantastic network effect and haven't been able to take advantage of it. Uh, and among other things, I think there's a lot of competition coming for that for that core checkout business. The fees are quite high. I, I absolutely hate using PayPal, the core PayPal service. Yeah, I've, uh, I've always hated that. Plus, yeah, you, you you said that the fees are astronomical relative to other. Uh, On the other hand, Venmo other just launched. Yeah, yeah, Venmo apparently just launched with uh, Amazon. We'll see if that can be nice, but it's not. No one thinks about Venmo in that way. People yeah. think about Apple Pay in that way. They think about. I, I'm not going to change my Amazon checkout. I already have my card logged in. You just click a button. It's not. It's not a huge deal. Um, I saw that. And Matt, uh, we got a comment here from Matt saying serious people use Zelle. That's true. Zelle has gained a lot of market share. But sorry, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, Zelle, especially for like larger payments, that makes sense. Um, with the, uh, I don't know. With Venmo, they've had such a hard time pivoting away from what they're most known for. And maybe they haven't tried that hard, but I don't know a lot of people that use the Venmo card. Um, and by the way, is my is my internet okay? It keeps saying unstable. All good to me. So I think you're fine. Okay. All right. Anyway, I uh, no, I, Venmo, it seems like it's kind of just the one solution and with the app Amazon stuff, like why would anyone pay with maybe if there was like the only like use case that I've heard was you've got some money in your Venmo wallet and you don't want to take the, the three days to transfer it to your bank account to then use it on Amazon. You rather just use it directly maybe, but I feel like that's kind of a niche use case. And I think most people don't have that big of a working capital problem that they have. They can't wait the three days. So yeah, I agree. Yes. Yeah. The that 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 fee thing that for sending the stuff, it's not doesn't seem like a great business to me. Eventually it feels like fees just compress and compress and compress in payment uh transactions. So I think the industry is interesting, but 
everyone besides Visa and MasterCard, I get a little bit concerned uh, with. I guess I like Remins a little bit. It's, it's a steady grower. That's an interesting one because there's the regulatory I like differences. Do, I feel like it's going to be disrupted here in some way. Maybe it's by like a crowd of remittance services, but like some of those fees that these remittance you're, you're services talking are about, getting, you're talking about PayPal or no, remittance. the remittance companies, even Remitly. What's the other one? The the one that's kind of the value play wise, but then the one uh, MoneyGram mentioned on our podcast. MoneyGram. Who was it? MoneyGram. MoneyGram. That's right. Western Union is also a big one. I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's just so many different solutions that could be uh that could just like there's fees that just don't need to be there yeah and and i've looked at wise uh as a, re- a remittance competitor and they've talked about consistently about how they consistently want to low lower their fees and get them as close to zero as possible so if your reliance on high fees is your business model i think it's just risky very very risky uh, and Apple Pay Pass whole thing. Yeah, and Apple Pay is not even they don't even care about making money in that business. They just want to keep people on the in the ecosystem. For now. For now. Maybe they'll make money later. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, point one five percent of every transaction, there's a lot. I feel like I mean you 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 saw the growth numbers there. I think they've done like just a phenomenal job rolling that out. And I, I yet I haven't gone to a like any sort of retail location that hasn't accepted Apple Pay in a long time. So whatever they've done, they've done a pretty damn good job. And I, I would not be surprised to see them hike hike that transaction fee in eventually three years. Apple loves doing that. So here's another comment from Matt. Again, Matt always is the best commenter here. Uh, talking about another company, I guess we forgot about in the payment space, but it's a little bit different than the consumer facing ones. And that is Adyen. Really recommend go listen to our interview with mostly borrowed ideas on them from a few months back. If you're interested in that company, there's a lot of good coverage there uh, out there on them. That That's an interesting one as well. They, they, they provide a really good service to these enterprises and they continually try to lower their fees. And it's a really complicated thing that a lot of people aren't going to be able to do in house. And then when you get, you know, you stick with them, you're going to be stuck with them for life. Um, I like their competitive position better than Stripe, but yes, Addy and trades at a very, very high multiple. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know. That's kind of my, November update for the payments. Last time we talked about the BNPL, which I don't know. I still haven't made my mind up on that. You're given the oh, you're talking about the you're talking about the report from last. I was thought I thought you were mentioning BNPL in general, and I said it's it's over. Like it's there, uh... but it's not. It's not. I mean, I don't think. I think a lot of those businesses, yes, they will fail, and it became a commodity super fast, but. People, I, I think like I underestimated how much young people just hate credit, which blows my mind. Because well, it is credit because it's the it, same thing. Yeah, it's not a credit card, but it is credit. Yeah, I don't like the credit cards versus the debit cards because of just the comp. Like, I, I, I the debit card is so much simpler; it just takes less work. But I know the the rewards you can get are higher. Um, but yes, the BNPL versus credit card is not that big of a difference like if anything you should be using a debit card if you really really don't want to have credit but we'll see on the other hand if you are a responsible spender you can take a giant advantage of all those uh bonuses they give but this is not a personal finance podcast ryan let's move to the tama i never know how to pronounce the the first name of their fund i always think it's thomas bravo yeah that's how my mind reads it so what what do they do? They raised thirty two billion dollars. 